In this video we're going to go through the bones and surface markings of the upper limb starting from the shoulder down through the arm all the way to the hand. Again this won't go in the direct order that your lab packet does but it will cover all the parts that you need to know. So here we have a posterior view of the shoulder and here we have an anterior view. Let's go ahead and start with the anterior view and you're looking at the front here so this is going to be the clavicle. This is the clavicle. There are two ends to the clavicle. There's the sternal end which obviously articulates with the sternum. It's boxier and if you come to the opposite end, you come to the acromion process, notice how flat that end is. Okay, so that's the acromial end, I should say. It's not really the acromion process. It's the acromial end of the clavicle. Now, posterior, we have the scapula. You can see it here, and you can also see parts of it in this picture. Here we have the spine of the scapula. The spine is what you can feel. If you put your fingers back there, you can feel that spine, and you'll have a lot of muscle attachments. If you go to the end of the spine, you go to the end of the spine, Here's your spine, here's your acromion process of the scapula. And again, it articulates, it articulates with the acromial end, the acromial end of the clavicle. So again, spine, and at the end is the acromion process, which articulates with the acromial end of the clavicle. Below the spine, we have the infraspinous fossa, and above the spine, we have the supraspinous fossa. Remember your superior, inferior, that should help you with that. So supraspinous fossa, infraspinous fossa. Okay. And again, the whole bone is the scapula. So here you see the scapula. Here you see the acromion process of the scapula. There's one other structure you need to know, and that is right here below the clavicle, and that is called the coracoid process. Now, if you work at it a little bit, if you actually feel below your, uh, on the lateral side, of your clavicle, you can actually find that coracoid process on yourself. Now making up the shoulder, um, we've got one more structure that we need to know on the scapula and that is called the glenoid cavity. That's where the head of the humerus is going to, art going to articulate with the scapula. So here it's marked by the E, here you can see it right in here. Okay, so that's the glenoid cavity. It's not a very deep cavity. Uh, your shoulder is very mobile. It's one of the most movable joints you have. But one of the side effects of that is that it's also not very stable. And it, one of the reasons it's not stable is because that glenoid cavity is not very deep. It's not very deep, so it's not a very uh, strong attachment between the humerus and the scapula. So it does articulate here with the head, with the head of the humerus. Okay, so this bone here is the humerus. This is the greater tubercle, which is going to be lateral, and this is the lesser tubercle, which is going to be in the anterior portion of the humerus. So again, head, greater tubercle, lesser tubercle. And we'll go over that in a little more detail on the next slide. Okay, so here's the whole humerus. I know there's lots of letters here. But let's look at this. And there's a couple things you need to remember. If you get a humerus on a test and it's sitting there flat, you need to make sure you orient it correctly so that you have the anterior in front and that you know the difference between the medial and lateral sides. So when you're looking at it, if you find the head, if you find the head of the humerus, remember that's always going to be medial because that's what's going to articulate with the glenoid cavity of that scapula. And the other way you can check too is down here at the distal end, you have the medial epicondyle. That medial epicondyle is much more significant than the lateral epicondyle. So that's going to tell you that it's the medial side. You also have to figure out which side is anterior and which side is posterior. The anterior side has a smaller indentation down here. This is called the coronoid fossa. It's a smaller indentation than you're going to see in the back. And I'm going to jump real quick ahead so you can understand the difference. So here's a distal anterior. Okay, you're going to have this coronoid fossa. In the back, you're going to have the olecranon fossa, and it's a much deeper indentation. So you have to make sure you got medial and lateral, okay, and then you have to make sure you're anterior and posterior. So if we go back to our original big old humerus here, this is medial, okay, this is anterior, so it's not as deep, so it's the coronoid fossa. So again, make sure you orient that correctly so you don't make mistakes when you're naming some of these structures. So this is the head of the humerus. 
this is the anatomical neck. E right here is the surgical neck. So if they're going to do surgery on a humerus, again, if they're going to replace it, which is not very common, but it does happen, uh, this is the surgical neck. These are the tubercles that I showed you on the last slide. The greater tubercle is going to be lateral, so it's going to be opposite the head of the humerus. So this is the greater tubercle, and it's bigger. And then anterior, on the anterior portion of the humerus, is going to be the lesser tubercle. These bumps, all these bumps that we've been talking about, are where muscles are going to attach. F just represents that you're looking at the humerus and that you recognize it. So we come down to the distal end, and over here, condyles, remember, are flat surfaces, and epicondyle is above a condyle. So this is the epicondyle, and it's the medial epicondyle. And again, like I just mentioned a few minutes ago, this is the medial epicondyle is much more significant than the lateral epicondyle. So that should be a hint to you, or a part you look for to determine whether you're medial or lateral. So that's the median, medial epicondyle. Now, your condyles here have special names. This, the medial, the medial smooth surface, the medial smooth surface is called the trochlea. Okay, it's called the trochlea, called the trochlea. So on the medial side, it's the trochlea. On the lateral side, it's the capitulum, okay? It's the capitulum. Trochlea is medial, capitulum is lateral. And then the indentation you have here, again, is called the coronoid fossa. The coronoid fossa is in front, and again, it's not as significant as the one in the back. Looking up close at the uh, proximal anterior, here you have the head. Again, here you have the anatomical neck. You have the lateral tubercle or the, sorry, the greater tubercle. Again, it's the greater tubercle, but it's on the lateral side, and then you have the lesser tubercle. And then here you have the surgical neck. Looking at the distal end, anterior, this is the same picture that we were looking at, the same view that we were looking at a couple slides ago. You have the medial epicondyle, the lateral epicondyle, the coronoid fossa, the trochlea is going to be medial, the capitulum is going to be lateral. Looking at the posterior view of the distal end, again, you have the significant medial epicondyle, not a significant lateral epicondyle. What you see come towards the, the posterior is the trochlea, and then you have the olecranon fossa right here. Again, a deeper indentation that also tells you that you're in the posterior or you're looking at the posterior view of the humerus. Next, we're going to go to the forearm. This is the radius. Um, the radius is on the lateral side of your lower arm. It's on the thumb side, and that's going to be important that you know that. The parts of the radius, here we have the head of the radius. Here we have the head of the radius. Then you have the radial tuberosity. This A is just representing that this is the radius. And then you have the little pointy part at the end and that is called the styloid process. So again, we have the radius, the head of the radius, the radial tuberosity, and the styloid process. Then we go to the ulna, which is on the medial side, located in the medial side, remember, in the anatomical position. You can find it because it has this U in it, so think of U as ulna. So the bone is the ulna. At the distal end, like we saw with the radius, you have the styloid process, that pointy part. There's your ulna, that's what the A is representing. Then we have this whole structure here, and this is called the trochlear notch. The whole structure is the trochlear notch. Now the very ends are named processes. Now if you think about this, and I'll show you to you on the next slide, this process, when you bend your elbow, this process is going to go into that coronoid fossa. So it is called the coronoid process. This process here, when you extend your elbow, is going to go into the olecranon fossa. So it is called the olecranon, it's called the olecranon process. So the whole structure is the trochlear notch. And remember that trochlear notch, remember that trochlea, okay, that smooth condyle surface that you saw in the humerus. 
you have the coronoid process, which will go into the coronoid fossa, and you have the olecranon process, which will go into that olecranon fossa in the humerus. So let's look at the back of the elbow. Okay, here's your humerus, here's your ulna, okay, which is going to be medial, and here's your radius, which is going to be lateral. Here's your medial epicondyle, which again should be a big hint okay, that you're looking at the medial side here. So again, your ulna is going to be medial. So you've got the medial epicondyle, and you've got the lateral epicondyle. Now the G here is pointing to that olecranon fossa on the humerus. And here you see the trochlear notch, okay, which you can't see the details of. You can't see the process. The process would be here, and that would be the olecranon process. You can't see the coronoid process here. Okay, you're just seeing the ulna. One structure that's very difficult to show you in a picture, but right here, okay, this circle here is around the head of the radius, but right here is what's called the radial notch of the ulna. That radial notch is where the head of the radius is going to articulate with the ulna. And when you, and you're going to learn these later, when you learn the movements of supination and pronation, that head of the radius is going to rotate in that radial notch. Now let's come down to the hand, okay, the anterior hand. Here, okay, here is the thumb side. So the thumb side, this is going to be the radius, okay, it's going to be lateral, and this is going to be medial, okay, this is going to be medial. Right here, let me do these two first. Right here and right here are the styloid process, each of the radius and the ulna, right in here. And then these are your carpals. These are your carpals. Okay. There are three carpal, or eight total, but you have to know the name of three. Okay, so this first one here is called the pisiform. Okay, the pisiform, and it's going to be on the medial side. It's going to be on the medial side. This is where your little finger is. Okay, so that's the pisiform, and you can actually feel that. It's just it feels like a round bone below your finger if you're going to palpate that. Right here is called the hamate. And there's this little lever thing right here that sometimes if you relax that muscle, you can actually feel your finger kind of boing on off on and off that if you try to palpate it. And then over here more on the lateral side is the scaphoid. Okay, it's a scaphoid. So these in total are the carpals, but those three you need to know by name, pisiform, hamate, and the scaphoid. Now if we look at the whole hand, again we're looking at the same thing here. Again, here is your thumb side. That's going to be the radial side. Here's your ulna. These eight, like I showed you before, are the carpals. These right here in the palm of your hand are the metacarpals, and your finger bones are called the phalanges. So what we've done is we take all the bones and all the surface markings from the shoulder down. So again, you need to review this video.